Okay, students. So this is going to be a pretty long video. So uh, to give a background of what we are going to do, we are going to derive the expression for the radius of curvature in the polar form. What I've drawn quickly is the pole and the initial line, initial line that describe what the polar um, coordinate system is. And we are drawing a particular curve over here. And on the curve, we are trying to look at one particular point called the r comma theta, right? So this is r comma theta, right? Now at this point, um, there is a tangent which has been drawn, right? And we are interested in looking at the, you know, the uh, perpendicular from the pole on the perpendicular on the tangent. And let's, you know, I've 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 highlighted this one. So this particular line has got a length called P, all right, this is P. Okay, now using these uh, you know, notations and also that, you know, that, that, that the equation of this curve is, is R equals F of theta. So theta is the independent variable, R is a variable dependent. And uh, that's how, you know, this entire picture is described to you. All right, also we need to uh, recall that in the pedal form, uh, the equation, the, the, the formula for the radius of curvature is R times dr by dp. We are going to use this particular uh, formula. Okay, now we start the entire derivation using a particular relation that we had learned is 1 by p square is 1 by r squared plus 1 by r to the power 4 dr by d theta with the notations that we had just explained. Now, this particular equation can be written as p to the power minus 2 is equal to r to the power minus 2 plus r to the power minus 4. Uh, okay, there is a square here. It's dr by d theta all squared. Okay, so far so good, right? Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to differentiate this particular equation uh, with respect to r on both sides. And we're going to use the chain rule uh, once in to deal with p to the power minus 2 term and once to deal with the dr by d theta whole squared term. So using the chain rule on the left-hand side, we get negative 2 times p to the power minus 2 minus 1 dp by dr is equal to uh, minus 2 times r to the power minus 2 minus 1. And then uh, we're going to use the product rule over here. So first we're going to differentiate r to the power minus 4 and keep the dr by d, d theta whole square as it is, dr by d theta whole square as it is. And differentiating r to the power minus 4 gives us minus 4 r to the power minus 4 minus 1. Okay. And then we'll put a plus over here and then write r to the power minus 4 as it is. So now we're going to differentiate the dr by d theta whole square. So we're going to use the chain rule to do this. Notice that, you know, like uh, we cannot really find out the d by dr of dr by d theta whole square. The variable in this case is dr by d theta. So there's a change of variable and for that we need to use the chain rule. So dr by d theta is the new variable and we introduce that new variable dr by d theta whole squared is being differentiated with respect to dr by d theta. And now you see that we have got a new variable dr by d theta. We must differentiate that with respect to r. But dr by d theta is actually a function of theta. So what we do is that we differentiate uh, dr by d theta with respect to theta. So d d theta of dr by d theta. And then we are left with d theta because theta because theta is the uh, newest uh, variable that we had introduced. So we are going to differentiate theta with respect to r. So it was going to be d by dr of theta. So it's d theta by dr. So this is how uh, you know we have used chain rule and the product rule in order to differentiate the given the, the equation that we had started with with respect to r. So let's simplify this particular uh, result. So we get minus 2 times p to the power minus 3 dp by dr. And that's equal to minus 3. Okay, pardon me, minus 2, uh, minus 2 r to the power minus 3 plus, um, okay, instead of plus, it's going to be a minus because the minus comes outside. So minus 4 r to the power minus 5. And then dr by d theta whole square. So we, I'm, I'm just going to write dr by d theta whole square, right? And then plus r to the power minus 4 is as it is, r to the power minus 4 times 2 times dr by d theta, right? 
because we are differentiating dr by d theta whole square with respect to dr by d theta. Okay, now d uh, d by d theta of dr by d theta is d squared r by d theta squared. And also at the same time, d theta by dr can be written as 1 over dr by d theta. Okay, now let's try to uh, introduce some notations and, uh, you know, like make this question a little bit more legible. Okay, now you remember that uh, we, 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 we had previously, you know, talked about r is equal to f of theta, correct? So r1, let's write r1 as equal to dr by d theta, right? And let's write r2 as equal to uh, d square r by d theta square. So this is one of the, you know, like um, niche uh, areas that calculus provides us. We can, you know, when you write R1 and R2, it is meant inherently that they are the first and the second derivatives respectively. Okay, so let's rewrite this entire equation once more in a very nice way. So it's minus 2 p to the power minus 3 dp by dr. Okay, we are going to replace R1 and R2 wherever it is possible. So here it is not possible, but here p minus 4 up to the power minus 5, here it is possible, right? So here we can write this one as r1 square plus uh, 2 times um, r to the power minus 4 as it is. Okay, I just need to move this entire thing towards the right a little bit. So, mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Uh, so what we are going to do here is instead of dr by d theta, we'll write r1. Right, so let's write r1, and instead of d square r by d theta square, let's write r2, and it will be 1 by r1. Correct. So if we cancel r1 and r1, we get minus 2 p to the power minus 3 dp by dr is equal to minus 2 r to the power minus 3 minus 4 r to the power minus 5 r1 square plus 2 times r to the power minus 4 r2. Okay, now uh, let's try to simplify our equation a little bit more. As you can see that, you know, two can be cancelled from every term. And, you know, let's let's also try to, you know, remove the minus as well. So let's try to remove minus two from all the terms. So we become minus p to the power minus three dp by dr. And this would be equal to uh, r to the power minus three minus Okay, minus 2 goes away, so it becomes plus 2, r to the power minus 5, r1 square, and then minus 2 goes away from plus 2. And the thing that is left is minus, minus r to the power minus 4, r2. Okay, now um, what we'll do is that we'll just, you know, like um, divide the entire equation. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll write the negative indices uh, properly. So 1 by p cube, dp by tr is equal to 1 by r cube plus um, 2 r1 square divided by r to the power 5 uh, minus r2 divided by r to the power 4. On the right hand side, if you can notice that we can take the uh, LCM, right? And the LCM is going to be equal to r to the power 5. So let's write down r to the power 5. The first term is r square. The second term remains as, as it is. And the last term becomes r r2, right? Okay. Now we are, you know, we have reached somewhere. And if you if you re, if you recall, right, we we had a equation. We 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 said that we are going to use rho is equal to r times dr by dp, correct? So uh, what we do is that we try to bring the r dr by dp on the left hand side, correct? So in order to do that, let's take the reciprocal of that. So it will be d it will be p cube, right? So p cube multiplied by dr by dp. And that should be equal to r to the power 5 divided by r squared times r squared plus twice r1 squared minus r r2. Okay. Now, uh, on the both sides, let's divide both sides by p to the power 3 and multiply both sides by r. Let's do those both steps together. Right. So we get r dr by dp is equal to, we multiply r with r to the power 5, it becomes r to the power 6 divided by r squared plus um, 2 r1 square minus r r2 and let's write down 1 by p cube over here right and you'll notice that you know it's, it's it would be fine if we write this as rho is equal to r to the power 6 divided by r square plus 2 r1 square minus r r2 multiplied by 1 by p cube okay now let's label this equation 1 we'll come back to this equation in a minute all right now let's uh, again, you know, like we had started off with 1 by p square is equal to 1 by r square 
plus 1 by r to the power 4 dr by d theta whole square, right? So we have started with this form, this, this particular equation. So what we do is that let's, you know, like try to write this equation down in a different way. And uh, as you can see that in this equation number one, our P cube term is somehow, you know, like this is unknown. We, we don't need P over here. So uh, if you see carefully, one by P cube can be written as one by P squared whole to the power three by two. And we know that you know, like one by p squared is there in this in, in in our in our equation that we had started off with, correct? So what we can do is that we can take uh, you know like to the power three by two on both sides, and we can carry on. So let's write down. Okay, pardon me. So one by p cube is equal to one by p squared whole to the power three by two is equal to uh, one by r, r square, right? This is r square, one by r square plus one by r to the power four. And instead of dr by d theta, let's write r1, right? And then dr by d theta whole square becomes r1 square. This whole to the power three by two. Now you see, if you take the LCM inside the bracket, it becomes r to the power four. And the, you know, the term, the first term becomes r square. The second term remains r1 square. And this entire thing goes to the power three by two. And you know, if you take the three by two power in the numerator separately and the denominator separately, the numerator becomes r1 plus r1 squared to the power three by two, and the denominator becomes r to the power six. Correct. Now, you know, if, if, if you are still confused about how the denominator comes like that, let's you know uh, do the do it here over here. So r to the power four to the power three by two is r to the power four multiplied by three by two. So two from here gets cancelled and we become, we get up to the power six, correct? Okay. Now let's uh, let's substitute this particular finding in the equation one. So substituting, substituting uh, one by p cube, uh, p cube is equal to r square plus r one square to the power three by two divided by r to the power six in, in equation, one right what do we get we get rho as the lhs and if you remember it was r to the power six divided by r square plus two r one square minus r r two multiplied by now instead of one by p cube we'll write r uh, r square plus r one square to the power three by two divided by uh, r to the power six right and then you see carefully that this r to the power six and this r to the power six get cancelled out and then we get rho is equal to r square plus r1 square or to the power 3 by 2 divided by uh, r square plus 2r1 square minus r multiplied by r2. And hence that completes the proof, uh, the derivation of the radius of curvature in the polar form. Thank you so much for listening.